On the breakfast this morning, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Ebu Adeburua, joins us to look at the legality of Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami's order to prosecute Twitter ban violators. 29 major generals to go on leave with their junior appointed the Chief of Army Staff. We'll have a retired general explain how this works. Wait for this. Price of bread likely to increase by 30% in Abuja. Bakers blame the increase in price of ingredients and regulatory bottlenecks. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbawan. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us on a Tuesday morning. Looking forward to the rest of the week. Good morning, Aneta. Good morning to you. Yes, indeed, a beautiful day today, but the news isn't so friendly. We know, first of all, um, the ban on the microblogging platform. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to mention the name, but you know the one I'm talking about. You know, Twitter. Okay, we can say it. So we know that um, Nigerians are still enraged over the suspension of Twitter and they're trending a hashtag, keep it on, to say, you know, let Nigerians be able to get back on Twitter, let Nigerians be able to interact with people, share ideas, you know, market their businesses, you know, let e-commerce thrive using that social uh, media platform. And we know that major... Um, oh, the founders of major churches in Nigeria have been speaking up uh, about this as well. Um, there was um, a message from Pastor E. Adiboye of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Um, the message here says, the Redeemed Christian Church of God is domiciled in more than 170 nations and territories. The tweet here are in accordance to Article 19 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, also, Pastor William F. Kumoyi um, of the Deeper Life uh, Church says, in view of the Twitter ban in Nigeria, please note that the content shared on this handle is targeted at a global audience in more than five continents and over 100 nations, and we share these contents from any of these locations. Now, these pastors are quick to, you know, begin to defend why they, you know, continue to tweet because... The Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakar Malami, has threatened to prosecute all Nigerians who are still active on Twitter. You know, he's saying that they're assembling them. And even though we've had lots of analysts to rub minds in this issue to say, what laws in Nigeria, what part of the Constitution really, um, or what laws are we breaking by being on Twitter? And his, his response to that is saying, when you get arraigned in court, you will find out what law you're breaking. So Nigerians are trending the hashtag keep it on to say the ban on Twitter should be lifted and Nigerians should be able to interact freely on social media. Yeah, and you know, I, I've also seen um, international uh, media organizations um, and you know, a few others make jest of uh, Nigeria um, and you know, all of that. Um, it's uh, hilarious. Good thing we're going to be having a, you know, an extended conversation about it uh, today so we can understand clearly. Um, how and if, you know, in any way, you know, any person can be prosecuted uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, continuing to use Twitter, um, you know, regardless of you know, the fact that there is no laws actually against it. And you can prosecute anyone in a place where a law doesn't exist, um, you know, and all of that. So um, we'll have that conversation. We'll see, you know, where, which codes have been broken, you know, also with the NBC codes and, um, yeah, you know, the UN Charter, like you've also mentioned, um, you know, how much power does it have? You know, how much, you know, does that guarantee? And if, the Nigerian government is really just trying to bully everyone, um, or of course, uh, Nigerian security agencies are really just you know trying to blow steam to see you you know how we can threaten people to you know stay off. It's wild how a couple of these government agencies have also still remained on the app to put out their messages and to checkmate whoever it is you know needs to be checkmated. As a, a guy I saw yesterday who um, was speaking on the, you know in support of you know, the ban, but he was, you know, apparently doing it on Twitter um, and all of that. But there is that. Um, there's also the um, angles where, regarding to Pastor Adeboye and Pastor Kumui, um, the criticism that they've received is mostly because, yes, you know, you might claim that your um, church is domiciled in, you know, 530,000 countries across, you know, the globe and other planets. But um, how about the people that, your, your members, how about the people who you, 
uh, you know, uh, preside over every Sunday. You have thousands and thousands, millions of uh, worshippers and members of your church who are affected by the ban. And so you cannot just single yourself out and say, oh, you know, well, we're, we're domiciled in, you know, 200,000 countries across the, you know, uh, the globe and, you know, all the conti another continent and other galaxies. And so, you know, we, you know, would um, work with the UN Charter and, and the rights that the UN United Nations guarantees. Mm -hmm. um, you should speak for your people. You should speak for the people that attend your churches every Sunday. You should speak for the millions of people who you currently, um, you know, are uh, um, Pastor, general overseer yeah. over. Um, and that goes to redeemed and, of course, uh, Pastor Kumi, I think that's, um, I'm not sure what check that, that is. Um, so that's, that's where most of the criticism has come from with regards to their tweets. And it's basically... People saying, you know, how embarrassing it is that uh, them, as powerful as they are and as influential as they are, um, have chickened out, you know, and have decided to, you know, be calling on the UN Charter when they can simply just say that this is, you know, outright, you know, bullying and it's, it's absolutely unnecessary uh, to be suspending Twitter simply because, you know, a tweet was deleted. And I've also seen a couple of people try and spin this. I saw one actor yesterday. I really don't know who he is. Um, some actor who was interviewed and, you know, said, oh, the, the president was insulted. And, uh, you know, by that, you know, Nigerians were insulted, you know. And th there's really just a couple of people who have tried to make it look totally different um, and try to even bring in, you know, Donald Trump into the conversation. Um, forgetting, maybe intentionally actually doing that, you know, because they try to forget that the, um, the president's tweet wasn't deleted because uh, Twitter felt like they didn't like the president's face. It was deleted because Nigerians reported that tweet. And I've said this a million times, Nigerians reported that tweet um, because they felt that it was threatening um, a particular region and, of course, referring to war times of, uh, of, uh, of 1967 to 1970. And that's why it was reported. And once again, for everyone who says, oh, you know, why don't they delete other um, uh, provocative tweets, you know, from them and the likes, you simply have to report it. If Twitter doesn't flag it or doesn't notice it as prov provocative, then it has to be reported and brought to their notice and they will delete or they will take action. The president's handle was not deleted. Um, Donald Trump's handle was, you know, was suspended and eventually deleted, also mm -hmm. on Facebook. And if you also, um, you know, should know that Facebook also did the same thing with, you know, the same message from President Mohamed Abouar. But nobody is talking about, oh, suspending Facebook. So why is it Twitter? What exactly about Twitter is um, a problem for the Nigerian government? What are they angry about with regards to Twitter? Um, so these are these are some of the things, you know, and I don't know why we are here. Um, I don't know why we're having this conversation in 2021. Um, uh, I said this, I think, two days ago that it makes me sick to my stomach, you know, hearing or being, you know, in, in this place, having these conversations, um, when we should be having better conversations with regards where we are going as a country and how much we have developed, how much we, you know, where we currently stand with regards to a developing country. It is sad and sickening. Professor... Atahiru Jaga, I believe that it, it was, um, um, I saw this on Inst um, Instagram, um, someone um, took a screenshot. He also was on Twitter yesterday and he said, oh, Nigeria has been affected uh, by the misfortune of having characters in governance who are neither selfless nor, nor a visionary, who are greedy whether for power or for money, who are essentially clueless about matters of governance and reckless in the way they handle governmental affairs. Apparently it was posted on the 7th of June, also on, um, on Twitter. Um, uh, Professor Jega also got criticized, even yes, now he seems to be speaking against whatever it is that is going on in government, but he was criticized, you know, because he was the electoral umpire in 2015, you know, when the, the current administration came in, into um, office. So, um, when we're, uh, we're once again in a very, very confusing and sad place as a country, and this is absolutely not where you know, millions of Nigerians, home and abroad, expected that we would be today, having conversations about suspending uh, a site simply because, you know, a tweet was deleted. Um, and I, I think I, it was a day after this happened that I was saying that there has to be better PR team for the presidency. There has to be a better way of handling these things. You should simply just say, this is not what we meant. A government who truly cares about the emotions and the feelings of Nigerian people would simply say, this is, you know, not what we meant, or this is not what the president meant. Um, you know, um, for those who are misinterpreting the president's words, this is exactly what he was trying to say, and this is what the message was directed to. But instead of doing that, you suspend the site, um, and, you know, that obviously is not the way, um, you know, a government should be run. Who is advising the Nigerian government? Who's, who are the people who are speaking in their ears and saying this is what you should do? Why is the Nigerian ego so big, yet we have... Nothing so much to be proud of 
why were our shoulders raised so high as a country with regard to some of these things when we simply do not have much developmental, you know, with regard to development to be proud of? Who exactly are we raising shoulders for that, oh, we can ban your social media site? How much effort has been put into doing the things that should be done? How much effort has been put, done, has been put into you know, um, reducing unemployment in Nigeria? Who has been arrested for the killings of thousands of Nigerians in the last few years? Who has been prosecuted? Who has been tracked you know, to be an actual source of the funding for terrorism and you know, banditry in Nigeria in the last couple of years? How do we have this much energy because a tweet was deleted and yet... We still have not been able to tell the families of people in Benue, in Kebio, in Katsina, or in Borno, or anywhere in the, in the country, that the people who, who murdered their family members and who murdered, you know, uh, burnt their houses and their businesses have been arrested and have been prosecuted and will be sent to jail. How do we have this much energy for... Because a tweet was deleted. Not because the account was suspended or because the president was blocked or anything. Because a tweet was deleted. The rest of the, of the thread was still left there, but that particular tweet was deleted. And we immediately have all this energy. Why is, why is Nigeria the way it is? Doesn't it make everybody sick? Yeah, we've seen responses from other you know, notable figures in Nigeria, like Kola Sherinka, describing this as dictatorial. And basically saying, you know, all oh, this is unnecessary. We saw um, Lagos State Governor Sonwulu. Say, saying that um, he feels the government of Nigeria and Twitter should sign an MOU or something. I don't really know why Nigeria should be so, I don't know, singled out to have an MOU based on the opinions of the president. No, but I read why, somewhere that he was saying you know, if the office was here in, in Nigeria, it would have been easier to settle these things. Or locked and... LOL. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, so while, while we're still talking about tweets, you know, cattle rearing and ranching and all of that in Nigeria... In other parts of the world, we see Jeff Bezos, you know, the world's richest man, going to be flying to space. So he has his own um, rocket company, and they call it Blue Origin. So Jeff Bezos will be flying into space July the 20th, and he'll be going with his brother. The, the rocket ship is called New Shepard. So he put out this video on Instagram saying ever since he was a child, he's always wanted to, you know, take a trip to space and it's going to be possible. I mean, that's the video you're seeing on your screen right there. You know, so he's, he's just breaking barriers with space tourism. He will be flying to space on the first crewed flight of the new Shepard. And, um, and this is just 15 days after he's set to resign as CEO of Amazon and Blue Origins, uh, Jeff Bezos' younger brother, Mac Bezos, will also join the flight. You saw him there hugging his brother. When he asked his brother to join him on the flight, he was really excited, you know, to be going on that flight with him. And um, Elon Musk launched uh, SpaceX, you know, building rockets to enter orbit around the Earth. Um, Elon Musk has announced plans to travel to space, you know, but Jeff Bezos seemed to be doing it first, you know. And um, I think this is, this is great, but the, the long-term vision for Jeff Bezos and his rocket company, Blue Origin, is to eventually send paying customers on a brief joyride to the edge of space. But, you know, the company has not started selling tickets for that. They've not announced a price. But they say the, the, the end game is for people who have enough money, who can afford it, to, you know, get on a space ride and just enjoy the view from the top. You know? Okay. So Good luck to them. I think that's, that's, what, that's, that's where we should be heading, up and in Twitter. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't these are go. technological developments, strides. This is rich people talk. We yeah. should. This is basically just rich people talk. This is, you know, Jeff Bezos and, you know, now he suddenly remembers when he was a kid, he always wanted to go to space because you're rich, sir. Well, um, if, if, <laughs> if, 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 if you weren't, weren't, weren't wealthy, you probably wouldn't have or remembered what you dreamt of when you were a little kid. Relax. And if the, and if, if the country, obviously, didn't have that, the space for this yeah. much innovation, so, that so, would yeah. never have been, been there, a There is so. that, you know, also. Um, we've had six years to develop something, one thing. Um, we've had six years of promises of developing the agricultural sector, but at the same time, have had bandits run through farmers and, 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 and herders and, and the likes in the last six years. Um, we will eventually go through eight years of, a, of an administration and, you know, we won't be able to really boast of anything that we have achieved. 
we can't put a finger on anything and say, okay, this is what we have achieved that has changed and improved the lives of Nigerians in a very, very massive way. There, there wouldn't be much. There wouldn't be, I mean, there might, you know, people might say, oh, they, you know, there's a few trains here, or oh, some roads have been built, but eight years, eight years, and that is, you know, really the thing with a decision you make when you vote a government into power. You might feel, any other person might feel, oh, you know, it, might, it doesn't affect me so much, but it does affect you. And eight years is enough time in a person's life to either push you forward or to stall you or to, you know, you'll send you, you know, 50 years backward. And those eight years are very, very important when you decide who were four years. Well, mm -hmm. eventually they, they get eight. Um, but those four years are very, very important when you decide who you put into um, a position as, as delicate as the president of a nation. And so in those eight years, your life either moves forward or stalls mm -hmm. or goes, you know, 50 years back. Um, that's how important it is. So when you, you know, are making these decisions and you say, oh, well, not my business, it actually is everyone's business. Um, so it has Nigeria gotten to a place where we start, should start talking about space? No. Definitely we Shouldn't not. even dare bring up, you know, that <laughs> type of conversation. That would be a joke at this time. All right. We'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu will be joining us to share um, his thoughts on some of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. Stay with us.